Hey everybody, welcome back, Devin the OG, the original Grognard here for Lock and Load Publishing, and yes, we're back at Tabletop Simulator, but we got something real special for you today. We are taking a look at World of War 85. What's the name of it, Keith? Oh, the <laughs> Blood and Fury. Blood and Hi, guys. Fury. I always want to call it Blood and Bridges. I am so sorry about this. This no, it's is Blood and Fury. Blood and Fury, right? This is we we are we. This is going to Game Found, not Kickstarter. Game Found uh, on Monday, the twenty fifth of July. We're finally getting this to our crowdfunding, and hopefully. With everything goes right, we'll have it in people's hands by Christmas time. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is Keith and I are just gonna play a little, a little, a little round. Well, we're gonna do one or two turns. We just want to show off the mechanics of the game, show off some new terrain, show off some new, uh, new territory. Uh, we've got new counters, we've got rounded counters, and you know what? I'm gonna just let Keith describe the rounded counters and why we went that way. And welcome back, everybody. Keith Tracton. Hey. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, the rounded markers in the... Uh, they're, I, I'm not sure what Devin's looking at. So, yep, but that's like rounded. Okay. So the rounded markers are... We, we got a lot of feedback from you guys. Uh, you preferred an easier way to distinguish between your units and the markers that might be on top of them because there might be multiple statuses within a stack. So we did some research and we got your feedback and decided that rounded counters would be a solution. They are the same diameter as the unit counters, but when you stack them up physically, you're going to be able to easily visually and physically distinguish between, you know, where's the next unit in your stack and where's the marker. So it should make things easier in that. And that goes for ops complete. That goes for your missile status, uh, which is, you know, reloading or low missile or no missile. It goes for uh, out of command. Uh, most especially, it goes for disruption because there's a lot of those. We also have them for the helicopter modes landed and nap of earth. And there's a couple others uh, that are going to be rounded, but uh, I'm not going to go over those right now. Um, we're still kind of finalizing that artwork to some extent. Um, Rex will remain square. <laughs> um Wanted to you know, create, th these two maps are actually from the expansion that's available as an add-on uh, that will be an eventually as an add-on in the found. Um, the expansion is called Operation Red Gauntlet, and it will have nine additional maps. One will be a generic geomorphic map, and the other eight, similar to the Defense of Frankfurt from first volume in the World War Eighty Five series, Storming the Gap. Um, will be eight maps that fit together in an historical configuration showing the city of Minden in West Germany in 85 and its environs because it was a major crossing point, the Weser River. And that's basically what Blood and Fury is about, is the Soviets are trying to cross the Weser and then cross the Rhine. Um, right now deployed, we have uh, uh, a squadron of uh, the Royal Tank, um, four platoons of Ace Challenger equipment, uh, and then opposing them, we have a battalion of T-80s with a little bit of BRDM AT support. Um, we're basically just looking to get as many shots as we can in. Um, just so you know, the, the main game of Blood and Fury, the maps are a little flatter than Stormy the Gap because they take place on the North German plane, but they are geomorphic and can be used with any map in the system, except these eight maps for this particular Red Gauntlet, we decided that the interior connections should be contiguous so you can see here where the the river the, uh, right there where, where devin's pointing um it's not going to be something you can actually connect to another side but the outer edges of the eight maps will will be geomorphic in terms of they'll connect to the short end or the long or, or the long end or both uh of other maps so these have a less they're less geomorphic but they are geomorphic on at least one edge um but the eight together will make a very realistic uh map of the Vezer uh, along in the Minden area. There are no new terrain types on the base four maps that are in the main game. There are three new terrain types on these maps. And I'm actually sitting at that my, my one challenger in the sitting in the middle of our new terrain. The copper looking city is dense city. And this is because there are many European cities that have an old city in the middle of them where, yes, you can actually move tanks through it, but you can't present the frontage that you normally would. So heavy armored units lose a die when they're trying to fire out of dense urban. Also infantry, which there's none in here, but they have an advantage of assault. I'm going to that right now. 
The second new terrain is light industrial. And if uh, Devin could go over that, it looks it's a little bit lighter, you can see, and they look like factories or port facilities. Um, in this case, it's also representing rail yards. Anything that is uh, a structure that you can derive cover from, but that isn't necessarily totally obstructing. So we classify this as obscuring, rough, like uh, um, cultivated. If you fire through, if, if your line of sight on the same line goes through one, your line of sight is clear. When it hits the second one, it is now blocked. So it is obscuring terrain. However, because these are buildings and things like that, there's plenty of cover. You actually get a, a better defensive bonus than, say, you know, heavy vehicles and cultivated get no bonus. But if you're in light industrial, you're going to get one defensive bonus die. Um, the third type of terrain is a little harder to see, but basically it's on the Vezer River because actually that's the, the Middle Land Canal, which crosses the Vezer River. And that canal can have 20 foot cement walls that go down to the canal itself. These are, it's not possible to bridge them with the equipment that would be brought uh, in our counter mix, um, such as pontoon bridges, which will be new. Um, so basically you have to find a bridge or you have to find a section of the river or the canal where you can actually lay a bridge or from a bridge laying unit or from a pontoon, uh, set of pontoons. Um, that's basically the, the briefing, uh, on this map. Um, so we're going to get right to it. Uh, and, uh, uh did, did you want to point out that? Oh, oh sorry. There's a tunnel. Uh, there's a fourth. I'm sorry. There's a, the so there is a tunnel there. If you actually go to Google maps and look at that particular, um, the reason the tunnel there is the middle end canal is a canal. It's constructed and it goes over the road, not under the road. So there is a road that goes under the tunnel. We have a, uh, a special set of rules um, for line of sights in a tunnel because now you've got a platoon of tanks in a tunnel. You don't have a whole lot of lateral vision. You can't really see like down the road. This is not squad leader. <laughs> you know, it, it's not about the, um, you know, the, the physical symbol of the road. Um, your mileage may vary. Um, and we do detail that in the rules that, you know, but for tunnels, there's a special line of sight when you're looking from one side to the other. Um, there also be, uh, we will touch on, uh, the elevation involved there when you're behind a tunnel hex and then there's the canal in front of you, which is, you know, 20 feet high, um, that, that basically can block line of sight, uh, past it. But we're, you'll have all those details when you actually see the companion book, which has the, uh, the specific, um, rules for the red gauntlet, um, excuse me, the, the red gauntlet book, which will have the specific, uh, rules for the, the expansion. Um... Deb, is there anything else I need to cover before we start shooting things? Um, I think one thing that may confuse people is that we do have a third color of dice now, and oh. probably just briefly touch over why we have green dice in the game now. Yeah, there there was another video where we did go over the, uh, the slight rules tweaks that made it into version 2.2. One of them is that all of your terrain bonuses, rather than just giving you a defensive die, the defensive die is always saves on a 5 or a 6. So if you have uh, a light armor... Um, vehicle such as uh this brdmat down here um that's his armor save is six if he's in terrain and the way it was in the old version he would only get additional dice but he'd have to roll against a six which doesn't really make sense because if the terrain is cover or say there's concealment that's just as effective for a brdm as it is for say a mighty leper two um and so therefore the terrain should be equal in terms of its save value across units so we've come up with a new die which is a green die for any defensive bonuses and that's any defensive bonus when you're rolling the defensive bonus dice it's good for a five or a six and that would be a green die when you're rolling the armor die you'd use your national color and so let's say someone fired at that BRDMAT in this new light industrial terrain that gives it one defensive die. You would roll one die in the national color. If you got a six on that die, you'd get a save. And one green die. And if you got five or a six on that die, then you would get a save. So it's a very subtle difference, but it adds a layer of, of realism without adding huge overhead. All right. Yep. I think um, I think we're ready to, to go. We have a little scenario set up. We're just going to... Pull some cards and go through, like you said, a turn or two. We'll see if we have any units left after the first turn. <laughs> <laughs> I have faith fast that your dice rolls aren't going to... Yeah, for you guys who haven't played this before, it's fast games. Here we go. All right, so uh, we have the ops deck, and let's go ahead and pull the first card. Battlefield Event Battlefield Friction. Event Friction. We're going to ignore that for now because I don't have that table up, but basically if you... This card is in uh, any every scenario. If it's a learning scenario... You don't want to use that card, so we're not going to use the card. But there's a table that comes with it that 
um, basically can give uh, additional formation, um, excuse me, ad additional formation activations, um, various and sundry reinforcements or detractions. Um, it's a it's a it's a random event table basically, but it's got enough stuff on it that it'll be fresh every time. And that card's available every may not be drawn every turn, but it's available. But for now, we're going to ignore that. So let's go to the next card. All right, Sea Squadron, the Royal Hussars. Now, on that card, there's a big red seven. That's the morale training value. Anytime we need to make a morale training check of any kind, and we'll let you know what those are, they're going to roll two die six. If they get a seven or less, they're good to go. The green five is the command range from the HQ marker, and the HQ marker is currently here for the, uh, the uh, Royal Hussars. And that means everybody within five hexes of wherever he's placed is in command. If he were reduced, that would be the four that's on the right in gray. But right now, I'm not going to... Right now, I have the opportunity to change the position of that HQ. I'm not going to do that. So then we would go to the next step for this red activation that we've pulled the card for. Um, there's nothing to check on disruption. There's no missile reloads to check. There's no off-board artillery. We go into the action phase. And now we can actually choose actions to do, which includes firing, moving, moving, firing onboard artillery if we had any, um, and assault. Um, I think I'm probably going to just start shooting. <laughs> <laughs> probably so, a good idea. Probably a good idea. So I'm going to take uh, the... Um, explode the stack here. So I have one troop. One platoon, if you will, but troop, if you know, for real. Uh, with the HQ. And I'm going to fire it because I can see down to the stack with Devon's HQ, which has... Oops, you're overstacked. <laughs> Why'd you put three in there? Stacking is two. Stacking is two. Stacking <sighs> is two. Did you cheat? I didn't cheat, <laughs> I just forgot. Right. So there's two two units, two platoons, and the HQ are in that hex. Um, the line of sight runs... Basically, uh, um, we're at level two because we're on a hill. There's a contour line, this white contour line. Everything contained with it is on the hill, and the hill is at level two. Um, there's nothing between me and it at level zero. It's sitting on the ground at the base of the city. Um, there is a light industrial, but because it is obscuring, when you're at a different height level, you can easily see over. Um, Consequently, I'm just going to take my shot. So I'm going to move this over here so you can see is this. F3 a light industrial? Oh, wait, it's not a light industrial. What no, am I talking not. about? G3 is oh, a light it's industrial. F3 is a... Oh, there you go. Okay, so let me explain the line of sight. So F3, it's the top of the buildings are at level one. There's, a bl there's always a blind spot immediately behind obstructing terrain, and city is obstructing terrain. Um, so he's in a blind spot, so I can't shoot at him. Yep. So that was dumb. Technically, I think there's only one unit you can shoot at. <laughs> right. And I don't want to shoot at him because I want him to shoot at me. Show everybody how it is. <laughs> so I'm not going to shoot at him. And I'm not going to shoot anything. I'm just going to stay put and let the Soviets come at me. So that's it. There's nothing that we don't do any particular squadron. We go to the next card. Now, I have two cards versus his one because NATO's a little flexible. This is our first end operations phase card. Um, we're in the operations phase when we start pulling cards. When the second one comes out, the turn is over. So this can turn could, could be very short. It'd However, if your formation, short. yeah, if your formation, your card never got pulled and you never went, you're guaranteed to go the next turn. So let's see what the next card Yay. is. Ah, there we go. So the Soviets are on the move. Um, once again, they they get to place their HQ where they want. Now their their card says their command range is four because they tend to have more units in a smaller area. That's sort of a simulation doctrine without having any overly heavy rules. And so now Devin is going to... Uh, again, he doesn't have to check for disruptions. There's nothing to reload yet um, in terms of missiles. Uh, there's no onboard indirect fire. There's no, obviously, there's no offboard indirect fire. So we go into the action phase. And well, so this includes movement. Yeah, go we're going to start off with the BRDM. And I hate doing this because it's kind of HQ hunting, but I am going to fire. No, that's all right. You can see the guys with the whip antennas. Well, <laughs> they can they can move I, out of there if they don't like. The command tanks would be a little bit further back, but between the two targets that I can shoot at, I'm obviously going to shoot at the HQ. So we're right. going to go ahead and pop our missiles at the, uh, the, the troop that has the headquarters on it. Right. So if we take a little closer look at the BRDM, um, just for the sake of people who haven't seen this before, it's... Any person, excuse me, any personnel. It's, <laughs> it's armor-piercing <laughs> values are in the upper left in a three-number uh, grouping. 
The three is in green and indicates anti-tank guided missiles, but it's also the number of dice he's going to roll. The four to the right is the two hit value. If any, each, each of those dice is compared against that four, and if it's a four, five, or a six, a four or higher, it scores a potential hit. The 11 is the, is the effective range. Half of that rounded down, which would be five, is point blank range. There's a bonus if you fire at someone in point blank range. And from one more than that, 12, to double it, 22, is long range, and you can still fire out to that far, but there's, there's a penalty for that. But right now, what, what, uh, you did the range. Is it 11? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It is perfectly eleven, so yep. it's at the printed range. So he has three dice to make four or better on each die to see if he can get potential hits. Then I'm going to roll against my armor save value plus any terrain in order to figure out you know to, how many hits I save against, and whatever's left scores. Well, now, and here's here's a question that's going to pop up because I'm sure people uh, may know about it. I'm firing uh, ATGMs into a city hex. That's correct. And does that the wires my tickets, or does that affect your defensive? It affects my defense. Oh, okay. So I got three dice, there's no modifiers, I got no leader with it. I'm not at short range, I'm not at long range, so it's straight up three dice at three. And I got one hit. There you go. There's three dice at four, but you still got the hit. Three dice at four. So I've got a bunch of stuff. Okay. First of all, there's only one there's only one my my Troop that's in there is the only thing that's available as a target, which he fired at. Um, I'm in a city, which gives me one defensive bonus dice. I'm on a hill, and he is firing from below the hill. That's a height advantage. That's a second defensive bonus dice. I don't have an ops complete marker, and I'm in obstructing terrain. That's concealment. Technically, I would get a third one, except there is a rule that for heavy armor and light armor, the maximum number of defensive dice you can, dice you can get is two. But I want you guys to know all the dice you're entitled to, plus one more, because he's firing anti-tank guided missiles into a city. And the same applies to woods. Anti-tank guided missiles, the wires on them, they don't like corners of buildings, they don't like branches, <laughs> they break. And when they break, the missile goes ballistic and you're not going to hit your target. So technically, he would be entitled to four defensive dice. But because he is heavy armor... He's only allowed, entitled to two. Now, again, we're going to use two green dice for those defensive bonus, and then we're going to use for the T80 four dice, Challenge. and they're the save. Yeah, the save bonus is in the lower left corner. If we can expand one, and that's four dice to make fives or sixes. So that's six dice. I'm going to roll defensively. All right. So that's four that are going to be blue to make a five or six, and then the green is also five or six. We could roll all six together in that case because it doesn't really matter. They're all rolling. It's the same value in this case. So why don't we roll six to make fives? Oh, I guess I can do that. Yeah, you can push the button. There we go. All right. <laughs> so I didn't roll any fives, and he rolled one hit, so I take a hit. Again, hits are very simple. The first hit disrupts. The second hit disrupts and reduces. The third hit eliminates. If the disruption comes off, let's say you're reduced, and you're disrupted again, you do get that first disruption. So in this case... I'm going to actually remove the thing. I drop our new disruption marker on here. And there we go. Disruption basically says, I can still move as long as I don't move. But I can't fire. And if I'm assaulted, I'm at a disadvantage. But he's not close enough to do that. Nice grouping. Now, when you fire any tank guided missiles, you do need to make a missile check to see if they've run out of missiles because their fire discipline was off. It's a two die six roll against the morale training value on his card, which is a six. If he rolls a six or less... They're good. Otherwise, they're reloading. Oh, they're reloading. <laughs> well, of course <laughs> That's a good thing you are. got that. Now, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to mark him ops complete because he's done his action, and we're going to use the red circle. Now, what's new to this game is we also have blue ops complete markers for NATO, so you'll get a better visual image as the turn progresses of who's been, basically, who's, who's used their action. So we continue the action phase, and Devin will pick the next unit or stack yep. to do an action. We're going to take this stack, and we're going right up the middle. Oh, hey, boy. diddle, diddle, right up the middle. Now, if we take a look at the counter, the movement for the counter is the number in the bottom row in the middle. And the icon around it usually is a circle, but sometimes they're also colored a little bit differently. Keith, did you want to go over that? Sure. If they are colored green, it means they are a transport, a ground transport. 
And that means they can transport another unit. Say it was a BMP-1 or an M2 Bradley. That means they could load, let's say, an infantry platoon into them and carry them along at a faster rate than they could go on, the, on their feet. Um, if it is blue and green, it's an amphibious transport. If it's just blue, it's an amphibious My unit and it can cross rivers other than... Again, the, the Mittel Canal, the, the new major river terrain, you can't cross that with an amphibious unit. You must, must, must have a bridge. All oh, right. white just means there are normal ground units. <laughs> yeah. So that's one hex, and I'm fairly certain you don't have LOS to them from anywhere. I do not. I do not, because the closest I would have would be from... Uh, I think I'm going to zoom in here to get the hex call. From here. H7. Yeah, from H7... And E2 here blocks that because the, you're in the blind spot of that. Yep. And when you come into E2... That's going to be a whole different ball away. That's a whole different ball game. So now we can actually see. So we're going to fire from this challenger here. That's here. And again, we have four to make three to shortcut it. The range is 14. If I count the range out here, that's two, that's four, that's six, that's eight, that's nine. It's not less, it's not seven or less, so it's not point blank range. It's just normal range. But I have four dice to make three. Um, it's a straight gunshot. I'm going to roll that. Oh. Oh, okay. I got four possible hits. <laughs> now, his defensive die, and again, I, there's two units in that stack. You have to pick one. I'm going to say the top one. Um, if I get. More than I've got four potential hits. If I score all four, the top unit can only absorb three, the bottom one takes the extra hit. But in this case, we have to see. So his defensive Mike save, off. his armor save, is the lower left grouping. It's four dice to make five. And it's the same save number as the defensive terrain. He's in city. That gives him a die. That's five to make five. There's no missiles involved in here. There's no fancy modifiers. So he has five dice to make five. Every five or six that he makes mitigates one of my four hits. Now, on Tabletop Simulator... Did I say mitigate? Cancels. cancels. <laughs> <laughs> so, in Tabletop like, Simulator, we do give you the the option of using the Rollomatic, which Keith and I absolutely love to use. But we also have the regular dice in this bowl down here, and you can pull out what you want. The Tabletop version is going to have a, a selection of red dice, blue dice, and green dice. So, you, when you're playing Tabletop, you just gather up whichever ones are the defensive and just roll them together. Uh, for, the, for the Tabletop, since we like using the, the Dice-O-Matic, we could roll two sets, but since the target number is the same between them, it's a five, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and roll them all together. Uh, so, that's five dice, you yeah, said? Five, yeah, five for five. Okay. Five to make fives is what we usually typically call that. Uh, nothing. Oh, nothing. <laughs> All right. So, not only did I kill the top unit, because three hits. The first disrupted, the second reduced and disrupted, the third killed it. And therefore, a Rex counter is earned for heavy armor. And Rex add additional cover. It actually adds another die of cover. Um, but then the second unit also suffers a disruption because it took one hit. So that was pretty helpful for me. That was. And that I'm going to go... Helpful. I'm going to go grab a new blue. That's our first use... Outside of playtesting, <laughs> of the of the new blue art, um, and now that was that was opportunity fire. So when he moved in my line of sight, the f the, fir the when he moves a hex in my line of sight, I can fire, but I can only fire once at one unit. If he moves another hex, I can fire again at the same unit if it made it through. But if it's disrupted like this, it stops. It's done. So now it is also ops complete. And he goes on. Uh, Devin goes on to the next unit or stack to act, to perform an action. And it the also causes a little bit of a bottleneck there because stack, since stacking is only two, I can't move two through two units through there, so I can't move stacks anymore. If I want to move through that hex, I got to move them one at a time. Right. Um, stacking is two, and it, and stacking limits are, are in place at all times. Yep. So. It is a bottleneck, which makes it for very interesting when you're trying to assault across a bridge into a city, and you have to be very careful about what you unload when, <laughs> like you would in real life. <laughs> That's about as close to realism as we get. Yeah. All right. So my next action, I'm going to take one unit from this stack, and we're going to go one, two. We know you don't have line of sight to any of those, so we're going to go three there to stop. I don't think you have any active units that have line of sight there now. I don't have any active. So if I and, and what active would be is, for example, this is not active because I'm disrupted, so I can't fire. Um, I'm not ops complete, but I'm disrupted. So 
I'm basically my HQ sort of out for the for this particular turn because uh, he's with a unit that's disrupted. He can help them undisrupt though. So Devin can continue on molesting. That's three. No, right? that's four. One, two, three. Oh, that's four. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Now, see, I need to think about how I'm going to prepare my assault on that challenger. I could just run up right next to you and let take a free shot, but I do want to get more units up there. So since I know that the heavy uh, residential is blocking, I'm in a blind zone here from your troops on the hill. So I'm just going to shift this unit over into this hex and they will be ops complete. Now there's one consideration. If he had moved into the the um the the the, the new dense city hex, again, heavy armor has one less die when it's firing out of it. So my opportunity fire against him because I would have fired against him in the adjacent hex instead of being four dice to make three, well, two because he's so close, it would be three dice to make two, which is still bad <laughs> for him, but the idea is that that's how that uh, dense city terrain works. Is I'm going to have one less die, so I'm not in a great defensive position there, um, especially since he has a seems to have an approach that is not covered by opportunity fire, <laughs> and eventually he's going to assault me. Devin kind of does that. We know that's, that's my thing. <laughs> that is all right. My thing. Let's continue. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and take the unit that it was stacked with, and again, since I. I know from the previous turn, I'm able to slide through unmolested without any opportunity fire. It will just move up into the previous hex that its uh, partner platoon moved up into. And now we do the, that unit is marked ops complete. We go on to the next one. So I will take one of these armor units without the headquarters. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. Now leaving that one there is probably going to be bad because next turn it's going to catch fire. Uh, but we're just maybe, gonna, maybe, maybe uh, we're just going to leave him there and he's going to be ops complete. And just to save time, we're going to move the headquarters right. unit up with it. Actually, he, he probably won't catch fire because he's out of line of sight of everybody on the hill. Hmm. Even H7? Even H7. I guess yeah, the here, that does clip. Here, yeah, the line of sight clips that. This is at level one, the top of the of this. This is at level two. Actually, this is level two as well, and you can't see... Well, no, I'm sorry. Now I'm really confusing things. Here, <laughs> um, the line of sight to here is clipped by here. So you're in a blind spot, basically, because he's got level one, and that's the, the yep. one hex blind spot. So, yep, it does even though I'm one level hex. above you. So, um, he's almost done his move. Um, he's going to be continue to move up. Um, while he's doing that, a quick word about line of sight. If hills are at level 2 and the tops of buildings and the tops of trees are at level 1, it's a simple triangular line of sight system. Um, if the higher unit is closer to the, inter the intervening terrain that's at level 1, then they can see the same they can see beyond the distance they are from the blocking terrain um that's how they can see over it so if they're five hexes away from blocking terrain there's a five hex blind spot and then beyond that they can see because they're they're high enough to see past that um tricky description easier to show not going to worry about that right here we're just going <laughs> to play um all right so that formation's done right yep okay so next card ah poopy all right so First thing that happens is I can move my HQ anywhere I want in terms of on top of one of my units. So I could move the HQ, for example, over here. However, because everybody would be in command range, which is the five on the card again, here, and my command bonus, the two on my HQ, can help uh, undisrupt more quickly the unit that's underneath me, I'm going to stay put. But I do get to remove the ops complete marker because everyone is now fresh. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to roll two dice, which two dice... I need to roll a 7 or less, but then there's plus 2 for the HQ bonus, so a 9 or less, and I will undisrupt this unit. And I barely made it, but I did make it. <laughs> Alright. So now this is, I'm in, I'm in pretty good shape here, because now I've got, uh, um, everybody's fresh, basically. Um, again, there I rolled to undisrupt, there's no missile reloads to, to roll for, and normally you'd roll for missile reloads or undisrupt. Um, there is no off-board artillery, and uh, we're ready for action. So I'm going to, since your op's complete, 
I'm going to move here oh. and do what's called move and fire. Now, the if we can enlarge the challenger, you'll notice it has an orange in the upper left uh, anti tank, uh, sorry, armor piercing uh, grouping, has an orange for. That means it has enhanced move and fire. Oh, God, we forgot about the uh, reactive armor. But there you go. I mean, the top of armor. <laughs> but uh, the four is uh, enhanced. Um, what that means is that I can move up to half my movement as NATO and suffer no penalty to that four. If I go more than half to my full, I will lose a die off of that, and that four will become a three. But in this case, I'm moving less. Now, for the pact, um, if we can look at one of the, the Soviet units... Oh, of course, I picked the one in the HQ stack. Um, if we can take a closer look at the at the T-80, um, you'll notice that it, it, it has a two, but... The packed units are treated differently. If they move up to half, they will lose a die. If they move more than half to full, they'll lose two dice because their stabilization was not as good. So, but for the moment, I'm actually going to shoot at the guys who are... I'm firing out of this new dense city train. So instead of having four dice, I have three dice. But it is definitely under seven hexes, which is <laughs> half of the 14. So it's three dice to make two. I'm hoping to make quick work of at least one of these guys. I roll. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh no. Okay, so I only got one hit because two of them were one. So please, people, just, you know, it's a game and it's like, ah, oh, it always happens. Especially when I'm playing Devin. All right, so he has, he's out in the open, but he has four dice to make fives or sixes to try and uh, cancel that one hit. And he does. He gets two. All right, so that was not helpful for me. <laughs> and I am ops complete. All right. Now, once I that was a move and fire action. So you move first, and then you fire. At the end of the fire, your ops complete. So now I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go charging in here. So if I go charging down the hill, this is one, two, three, um, four, five. I can't get in there. I think that's it's three for a new. I have to actually. Have to it. So I'm gonna go here five six. Well, we should also point out that this road does continue to connect over the map. It's it, we we just now spotted this. It will be fixed uh, in in as soon as we can get Mark von Marshall to fix it. But technically, right. this is a retaining pond, and there is the road does continue over the retaining pond. Right, the it's road does. Like, yeah, yeah, but technically it goes lower. So because if you're in a full water hex, the center of the hex determines your terrain, and so that's at a height level minus one. Got to hide in there. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, it, interesting for helicopters who are one level above. By there. All right, so we're going to continue our. Uh, actually, I think we're now we're going to fire at the BRDM since I let you fire. So um, this challenger here is going to fire at the BRDM across the valley. Um, it's uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven hexes as we did before. Um, and this challenger is going to fire four dice to make three or better. I'm going to zoom out and do it. I like doing the dice. Ugh. All right. Four possible hits. There's probably not much chance this guy's going to survive. <laughs> However, explode the stacker so people can see that. Um, his defensive value is six. He gets one die for himself. Then he gets one die for the light industrial at a five or a six. So he's only going to get two dice. I scored four hits, so he's going to take at least two hits. So since we're using uh, the normal armor and it's not a five, we'll go ahead and roll two separate dice, one for the normal defense of the arm of the vehicle and then one for the defensive. So this one is going to be at six, which is nothing. And this one's going to be at a five, which is one. But that still leaves three, which, which is enough to kill three, which, anything. Yeah, so he becomes a wreck. That's okay. I no. probably now, wasn't going to make his ammo reload anyways. But... Right, right. Now, he was in obscuring terrain, so there was no question of concealment. But had he been in obstructing terrain, which is a city or woods, because he had an ops complete marker, he's not concealed. They know he's there. So you wouldn't get a to die for concealment. Jeff Schulte, our lead plea tester, is very good about reminding me about concealment when I forget. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> all right, so he's up complete. In. Right, exactly. Uh, I'm going to do something weird with this guy. I'm going to get down in the weeds. Wow. I'm going to go one, one, two, three. Wow. Now, my movement is six, so I've only moved half. And I'm going to fire down the hex spine. 
at this guy. Yep. Oops, that's the wrong This guy. There we go. From here. Now, the line of sight literally goes down the hex spine, so when you get to this hex, it's going along the hex, the hex side between these two hexes. Um, when you have a line of sight that goes along the edge like that, if it goes along the edge of a blocking terrain hex, like that dense city hex, the first hex side of, of like that it's clear, which in this case it is. If there were a second hex side like that, on either side of the hex spine, then we'd be blocked at the second hex side. So I have a clear line of sight here. Uh, I'm at level zero because I'm sitting on the ground there. He's at level zero because he's just outside the city. It's all good. I'm going to take this shot. The range is one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's point blank range with a challenger, and you really don't want point blank range when a challenger's 120 millimeter Rheinmetall, you know, clone <laughs> is, uh, um, uh, I forget, I forget which, I forget which version off the top of my head that the British used, um, of the 120, but it was a powerful weapon. Um, and so that's four dice to make three becomes four dice to make two. Oops. I rolled the Russians, whatever. And then once again, four hits four possible hits, I should say. Now his defense, he's out in the open. It's a normal shot. It's four dice to make fives or sixes. Excuse me. All right, I would have to designate whether I was firing at the top unit to which the HQ is deployed or the bottom unit, which does not have the HQ. So let's just say the HQ for the sake of argument, because then if we, if we manage to do any hits against the unit, we can tell you what happens when there's an HQ involved defensively. One, One save. save. Okay, so that top platoon is destroyed. A wreck marker is placed in the hex, so the second platoon has a little more cover. <laughs> Sacrificed for a reason. Um, <laughs> the HQ is technically... He was deployed with a unit that was destroyed, but there's another friendly unit there. He instantly drops to that unit, but because there was a unit destroyed in the hex, you need to roll to see if that HQ is reduced, if it's flipped to its side. Because the HQs you can't target directly, but if the units they're deployed to are affected, or anybody in the hex is affected, they may be reduced. So in this case, normally you would roll a die and a 1 to 3, if someone were reduced, if you rolled a 1 to 3, the HQ is fine. A 4 to 6, it would be reduced. But because something was actually destroyed in the hex, you add 2 to that. So basically on a 1, it's fine. Anything else, and it's reduced. So we roll 1 die 6. So close. <laughs> um, and so that HQ is reduced. Now, if it's reduced a second time, it becomes suppressed. And we do have an off-map box for that. Um, when it's suppressed, it's off the map, which means if the card comes up for that, there's no HQ to place, and all of the units are now technically outside of the command range of the card because the HQ is not on the map, and they're going to have to roll to see if they're out of command. Very simply, out of if they are out of command and you roll by each hex, they cannot fire except for opportunity fire, and they cannot move. So there you go. Um, I'm ops complete. I'm going to throw a marker on there, and that's my formation. So we're done with that. We're going to go to the next card. If which, we get the second end ops card, which I think it is, right? Yep, because there's only one card left. There's only one card left. That's We've completed our operations phase. All we have left is the marker removal phase, which is logistics. So this is where we're going to remove these ops complete markers. If there were any out-of-command markers, we would remove them. We do not remove disruptions or any other kind of marker. We do reduce smoke and things that, that are not in this particular scenario. But now we are ready to start the second turn. And you'll notice there's wrecks all over the place already. It's 15 minutes of fighting with very long range weapons at very short range. Yeah, you're going to get this. <laughs> so let's go into a second turn. Uh, again, we're going to ignore the card, the battlefield, battlefield event card if it shows up. Like and there it did. is. There you go. And again, if you're playing, the, once you get the game, we do recommend that if you're using it as a learning friction card, but then when you, when you know the game, go back to that scenario and add it in and you'll fun experience I, I i like chaos on the battlefield and the battlefield event friction does that very very well first end ops okay this could be a short turn now, if we now, pull the second end if we pull the second end ops right now that turns over and so you kind of have to gauge that it doesn't happen all that often especially in larger scenarios but it does happen and yeah you're guaranteed to go the next turn but if you have a scenario where it's only 10 turns and you're supposed to get somewhere and you lose a turn that can happen it can hurt it can hurt it lot. can hurt so now, some people may may note that I stick the end operations away from the normal discard. Sometimes you will have games that have three end operation cards in it. So I just set it off to the side to, to, to remind myself how many end operations cards I have pulled already. So it's and just, just, so you it's know, just we, a little, little quirk of mine that I do when I play. 
Yeah, we do. We do indicate in the rules that if there are three or more cards, end ops cards, um, it's always when the second end operations card is pulled that the turn ends. Doesn't matter how many cards there are on the deck. If you have more cards, it sort of makes for a choppier turn because now you get smaller chunks. But that that can be helpful for larger scenarios. Yeah, and a good example of that is like when we were playing uh, Frankfurt, we would have to set the one end ops because we may pull eight or nine formation cards after one of the end ops turns of cards was pulled and did, did I, I forget did we pull an end ops turn card already or not so it's 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 a good reminder it it, it helps so. whoops ah again yeah, okay ah, so now good. i'm going to try and clean him up before he cleans me up and you'll notice we're in <laughs> we're in a knife fight right now <laughs> um i think i'm going to open with the challengers here because they're going to hit me or I'm going to hit them. I'm going to take the first shot. Um, so I'm going to do, since I'm definitely at point blank range, uh, I have four dice to make threes, which becomes four dice to make twos um, for that. And I will fire. I noticed I didn't, I didn't change where my HQ was and everybody was in command range. Make sure of that. Uh, it looks like I got uh, four possibles. Three. Okay. Oh, no, twos because you're point blank. Yep. Yeah, yeah, because I'm point blank. Yeah. So, and he's in the open, so he's got four to make five from his... Uh, oh, okay. So we wiped him out. So again, we, we killed the top unit. And the second one is disrupted. Now, you'll notice that the Russians are kind of being manhandled here with these challenges. These challenges are really potent. There's not a lot of them. And normally there's more than one <laughs> battalion of tanks against them. Um, so this is literally just we counters. I knew this was going to be okay because it's, you know, it, it shows you that the, the, the way it says you more about the combat system when you have more hits than when you have fewer hits. We're not trying to be subtle here. We're trying to do sledgehammer. Yep. <laughs> I want to give you guys the experience. <laughs> um, so he's ops complete. I'm going to grab an ops complete marker. Um, I'm going to take the shot here in H8 against the guys in E18 to, uh, or sorry, E13 to finish them off. So again, it's the same thing. It's four dice to make twos, but this time there's barely anybody left. And the winner is, oh, okay. We got three possibles. Um, if I, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what's in the hex with the loody stack here. It's the wreck. All right. So he gets a die for the wreck and that's a, that's a defensive bonus dice. That's a green die. Um, but again, it's going to be a five or six. So we just add it to the four to make five. The HQ has a bonus. It does not apply defensively. I want to emphasize that the HQ bonus does not apply to defensive bonuses. So he's going to have a total of five dice to make fives or sixes to try and, um, Cancel some of these hits. Oh, that was almost a one. Six. Oh, almost okay. Six. So I scored three. He canceled. So there's two left. But since he no, he's no, he's alive. Yeah. I, yep. I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. So four. he's two hits means he's reduced and disrupted. Now he was reduced. So again, we're going to roll to see if the HQ becomes re suppressed basically because if you reduce it a second time it's suppressed one die six but because nothing was destroyed one to three and he's okay and he's okay okay some people i, I told stories I'll, I'll tell the story real fast um when people played in the old game they didn't realize that the hq isn't destroyed by this role it's just reduced by failing this role um and that's the case you have to reduce it twice to suppress it now if you have an hq that's in a stack that is eliminated now, whether it's full strength or whether it's reduced, then it's automatically suppressed, reduced, you know, placed in the suppressed box and reduced. And it remains reduced for the remainder of the of the game when it comes back on. And it will come back on the next turn, but not for the rest of the current turn. Um, all right. Well, that was a good shot. The British are making good use of their ammo. Um, <laughs> the guy on the hill here... Why am I trying to explode a stack that there's not a stack? Yeah, there's a um, stack. Yeah, the guy on the hill is going to hit the stack here. That's not a stack. That's a guy who's left who's disrupted in a wreck. So there's a lot of defensive bonuses here. But we're going to take the shot anyway. The range is, again, two, four, six, eight, nine. So it's, it's effective range. It's not point blank range. So that would be, from here, four dice to make three. I'm going to roll four. Click. My shooting's been good today. Basic. All right, me. that's four possibles. Literally killing him. So um, he gets one die for the city that he's in. 
one defensive bonus. He gets one for the wreck. That's two. Then he gets his base four to make five. And again, same, um, since they're all the same uh, 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 save value, he can roll all six of those together. And one thing I should let you know is if you're disrupted, it doesn't affect, or even reduced, it doesn't affect your armor and save values. You still have the same armor. It's just there's fewer targets within the hex. So six to make fives. Oh boy! Hey, One, two, three, four. Guess what? He saved four out of my four. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, with the way you've been abusing my, uh, I, I grant you, I grant you. But that can happen, absolutely. <laughs> so, like I said, there's a lot of stuff they can hide behind. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to do. Uh, let's see, your HQ. Oh, they are disrupted. Okay, I'm going to assault. Yep. Because. We want to show you that, and because I think we're running out of things to shoot at. Or yep. So, all right. So I'm going to move three here. I think it's three. I, I have to consult my own rules because it's new terrain. But yeah, if you if you're not using the road to get in the city, but then I'm going to down the road four. And if there were anybody who was going to fire opportunity fire, this would be the last hex they could do it in. Once I move into the hex, or you know, start to move into the hex, whatever it is, then there's no more opportunity fire. So this is sort of, for an assault, this is where the movement portion ends, and the last time that somebody can fire off fire, and again, that's one shot at one unit coming in, so if you have a stack, somebody's going to make it. And then once I move in here, this is the actual assault. So I'm going to explode the stack. Oh, hang on. Didn't drop it on the right spot. Yeah. Right. Let me drop it directly on it, and then we'll make it a stack, and then we'll be able to spread this out and show you exactly what we have. All right. So... What we've got is my, uh, the lower right grouping, Devin, if you could zoom in on, on my lower right grouping yep. on the Challenger, that's a two dice, this is your assault value, and that's two dice, again, usually the, 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 the is two, and the superscript is four, two dice to make a four, five, or six. Assault is different than direct fire combat, which is what we've been doing, because there are no saves on either side. It's just, I'm going to roll to do hits, you're going to roll to do hits with your assault value, Whoever makes more hits wins, and the other side retreats if they're alive. If one side is killed and the other is not, the surviving side wins. Um, also, if you happen to be doing it with a vehicle like I am, if I do win, I'm going to be able to go an additional hex. It's called a vehicle assault bonus. So in this case, I have two dice to make four, but the HQ bonus on my HQ, if you could zoom in on that, um, that two on there, that's two additional dice. So I have four dice to make four. So I'm going to roll four dice to make four to start. And I get two hits. All right. They're actually going to score. But before that happens, normally that T80 would have two dice to make four. But because it is disrupted, one dice to that make automatically goes up. Reduced. Oh, it's one. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm looking at it. I need to zoom in a little closer here. Sorry. <laughs> oh, one dice to make four. Because it's disrupted, it becomes a six. It goes to the highest one. So it's one dice to make six. But because of the, its HQ has a bonus of one, now it's two dice to make six. So Devin's going to roll two dice. Now notice the wrecks don't count. The terrain they're in doesn't count. There's no terrain in Assault. It's all unit to unit. And there's nothing there. So I got two hits. He only has one left. The wrecks are already there. You don't put more than one wreck in. The HQ, everything's been destroyed. It is suppressed. It goes off to the suppress box. Uh, I have the hex, and I'm actually going to go through the tunnel and advance for my thing. And that's kind of the way that works. So we've covered uh, a good number. We haven't covered indirect fire at all. It's, I don't want to go into that in the moment, but this is the basic you know, direct fire mm, fight toe-to-toe -to -toe kind of combat uh, involved in uh, the World War 85 series in general. And these are some units that are, uh, you know, that the challengers are specific to the new Blood and Fury volume that uh, we're on Game Found here to support. So I want to thank everybody again for watching. Um, I hope you got something out of this. If you have any questions at all, we're answering the comments in Game Found once it's live. We are always available on the Facebook World at War 85 page. Um, we are also available on the Lock and uh, Publishing forums for World at War 85. Um, Board Game Geek, we do have a presence on. Uh, my team tends to get to that before I do. Um, but, you know, if you have a specific question for me, they will pass it along to me if you want it answered by me. Um, I do have a, a really good team, though, and they, they make calls, and they, they, they're great. So uh, that's about it. Devin, thank you. I want to thank you for your help, as always. 
um, in, with the technical side of this and for being a fantastic opponent. Excellent. And I know there's going to be a there's going to be a rematch where he is going to have two battalions and I'm going to pay. <laughs> so, well, I'm just thinking. Um, imagine what would have happened if I'd have gotten the formation card instead of you had. That right would, would, and, have, would have definitely changed how this turned out. Right, and and though the game plays so fast, if you do experiment with the the person you're gaming with at that point, I would actually roll that back. Roll that back playing and live. See what happened. Roll it back and see because I be really. <laughs> which fair um so anyway but again thank you all again and uh be sure to take a look at all the game found materials and if you find anything that you have a question about uh touch base with us and we're happy to explain questions comments concerns complaints criticisms in the comment section below and we will talk to everybody later see ya